He was commander of the International Space Station. He spacewalked twice, and he also helped install the Canada arm on the space shuttle. Now he has a single out, which was uh, released late last month. Retired Commander Chris Hadfield joins us this afternoon. Chris, thanks a lot for doing this. What was life like on the International Space Station? Uh, you know, Jeremy, I flew in space three times. I uh, Back 20 years ago, I helped build the Russian space station. Mir, I flew on the space shuttle. And then uh, a dozen years ago, I flew again on the space shuttle to go do spacewalks to build the International Space Station. And then, as you say, uh, lived up there for half a year. So the, 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 the collection of those three experiences of, of helping to pilot three different spaceships, visiting two space stations and then commanding a spaceship and living up there it's it's the combination of an extremely complex adult technical challenge and at the same time every little kid's dream Ma magnificent experience oh chris growing up in ontario as a kid you watched the infamous apollo 11 launch from then you decided this is what you wanted to do one day yeah i I'd, I'd been uh, you know reading science fiction books and and um uh, watching uh, Star Trek on TV and, and that movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. And that was all science fantasy. But at the same time, there was science fact with the first people leaving Earth with Gagarin when I was a little kid and then going to the moon. And, and as you say, in the uh, summertime of 1969, I was, I was nine years old, watching the first two people walk on the moon. To me, that was just... Uh, it was it was fantasy turned into reality. It was like it was like permission, as a, as a young Canadian, to um, to set my sights on a place that I never thought I could have. And, and I pursued it for my whole life, and it's amazing where it has led me. Chris, you were also the first Canadian to walk in space. What was that experience like? Uh, you know, if you watch space movies, you'd sort of get the impression we, we go outside all the time, uh, like in gravity. I don't even know what they were doing out there, but it's not actually like that. It, it's quite dangerous uh, to go outside. And so we only do it uh, under uh, extremely necessary circumstances. So you train for years and years, and, and it's choreographed and planned. So it's a really technical event in your life, but at the same time, you are out alone in the universe, holding onto a spaceship with one hand, and, and the whole world just uh, pouring by next to you, like this enormous, ever-changing kaleidoscope of color and texture. And then the other way, there's the, the bottom, bottomless endlessness of the universe, like a black you wouldn't believe. And you're in the middle of that, alone, holding on with one hand. It's a busy place to be, but boy, it's a spectacular personal experience also. Chris, while you were spacewalking all alone, did you ever look at the Earth and say, oh my lord, this is cool? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I thought when I went outside, I would sort of talk about what I was thinking about, because you can't keep notes. And I thought, if I, keep, if, if I keep talking about it, then I'll listen to the tape later. I'll be able to remember what I was thinking. And so I, it's funny, you, you quoted exactly, because when I listened to the tape of what I said, it's an entire long tape of me going, wow, the whole time. Because <laughs> it just, it overwhelms thought. It's like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. And it's always, you know, you're racing around the world in 92 minutes. Every place you've ever heard of or dreamed of is, is pouring by at eight kilometers a second underneath your feet. And, and, and while I was outside, we went around the world 10 times. So wow. I saw the whole thing. It, it is, uh, it is a, an extremely distracting place to work. Let's talk about your time on the ISS. You became quite the social media star. Uh, even I, uh, you know, had, uh, followed you on Twitter. You tweeted a ton of photos, uh, breathtaking uh, scenes around Earth, the, the, you know, space, the uh, International Space Station. What were some of your personal favorite things to see up there? Well, um, NASA doesn't give you one second to take a picture of the Earth because they know that every chance you get, every time you get even slightly ahead of the schedule, you're going to uh, pull yourself weightlessly over to the window and, and watch the world and take pictures of the world. And uh, I, w I went around the world 2,600 times, and so you get to know the whole planet like like you know the town that you're from, you know, and you, have, you know it's around every corner, and yet... Every time you come around, it's refreshed, different weather or different lighting or different time of day or different season even. So the whole world, the, the thing, it's a hard question to answer because 
the whole world is like this uh, continually unwrapping surprise of, of of beauty every time you come around. There are some parts, like the Bahamas, that are just raw, gorgeous. The, mm. the deep blue of the ocean and the pale, pale blues of the shallow reefs or the outback of Australia that is uh, that is so multicolored and and incredibly bizarrely uh, dry that that it shows you know immediately when you're over the outback but but the rest of the world uh it, it's like this intimate revealing uh, of, of a surprise the whole time you know for five months like i said you lived on the international space station you had to get used to a lot of things going to the bathroom uh even simple things like washing your face that must have been quite the experience well you have no running water you know, or at least you don't have a sink, uh, you don't have a drain. Um, so, really, let's just take washing your face. So, uh, you have to go to one of the two water dispensers on orbit. You need to choose hot or luke, uh, or hot or, or lukewarm. Those are the two choices we have. There's no real chiller on it, and then squirt it into a washcloth, and then, of course, clean your face up. And if you get your face soapy, then you like need a second washcloth because there's no way to rinse. And and then. What do you do with a wet, soapy washcloth on a spaceship? Um, so we tend to just sort of Velcro it to the wall and then let it air dry so that the evaporated water gets back into the dehumidifiers and goes into our water purification system. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it's weird when your entire world is the size of a couple airliners and, and uh, the things that you do affect everything else. What was it like returning back to uh, Earth, uh, you know, getting your Earth legs back and, and breathing that fresh Earth air? Uh, it depends how long you've been off the Earth. Uh, on my first two flights, I was only up for a couple weeks. So you're still uh, in transition. You're not completely adapted to being up there. <coughs> so you can readapt pretty quickly coming home. But on my third flight, when I was up for five months, you get completely adapted to being weightless. And so when you come home, you have to readapt. Your your balance system is has forgotten what to do with gravity so you can't balance your blood pressure regulation system is shut down you can't um, your body doesn't lift the blood to your head so you faint so you are dizzy and faint you've lost bone density so your your hips and upper femur are, are more fragile and it took uh it took a few weeks to feel normal it took about four months before i could properly and it took about a year and a half to grow my skeleton back wow but but it it, it was immensely worth it. It is just such a magnificent experience. Retired Commander Chris Hadfield on the show this afternoon. Chris, uh, one thing you love to do up there was sing, and now you have a brand new single out called uh, Feet Up. Tell us about that song. Well, I've always been a musician uh, my whole life. i uh, played everywhere I've ever been, dragged a guitar everywhere I've ever gone. And uh, I, I was sitting down uh, before launch talking with my brother about, you know, writing music. And he was saying, well, what, what's different? about being up there you know what what are some of the funny uh differences when you're when you're weightless and, and i said to him well if you're weightless you can't put your feet up just by definition there is no up and, <laughs> and we both sort of laughed and then we just i just made a list of all the little goofy things like you can just do a thousand front flips if you want and you know who will ever know and it's just it's so joyous it's like a superpower, uh, you know, being weightless. And so that song, Feet Up, which is the first to release off the new album, it, uh, it's just kind of a, a fun celebration of living in a place with no gravity. All right, Commander Chris Hadfield, pleasure having you on the show this afternoon, sir. Thanks very much. Yeah, the album comes out uh, October 9th, and I hope you like the rest of the tunes as well. Can't put my feet up Can't hold my lunch down Turning the sound up, I start to spin 